My 2011 Mustang convertible is getting treated to a lot of technology upgrades this fall. The first of which is this Thinkware U1000 two-channel dash cam. Let's open the box and see what's inside. Okay, we got the main camera, I would say. That's going to stick onto the windshield. We got a thick looking little user guide, customer service information, Thinkware Cloud tutorial, and That's a polarizing filter. That looks like it should be a hardwire kit. Windshield mount. Rear channel camera. <laughs> Let's see if we can make this work in a convertible. Cigarette lighter power supply. USB cable with one right angle connector. Some uh, looks like cable clips, adhesive cable clips. Other adhesive strip, presumably for the dash mount. A uh, USB stick. Oh, this is a reader. This is a micro SD reader for a USB port. And 32 gig micro SD card. And some desiccant. So here are a couple things that I learned about this dash camera so far. When I tried to uh, set it up in the car, by connecting it to the smartphone app, the Thinkware app, and going into live view, it kept disconnecting. It wouldn't stay connected for more than 20 seconds and the image was completely pixelated. That's with a iPhone 12 Pro Max. Um, so I thought, well, it needs a firmware update. So I went to download the firmware update and it turns out Thinkware server for the firmware update is incredibly slow. Um, Finally, I got it and uh, uh, installed the firmware update and suddenly it worked fine. So step one, learning one, if you're uh, buying one of these cameras, the first thing you should do is do the firmware update. Otherwise, you're probably not going to be able to set it up. Now, the next thing is with this uh, reverse camera, this rear channel camera, I know it seems like it's a crazy idea to try and make something like this work in a convertible and it probably is. There's really only three options. Um, one is installed on the front windshield looking backwards. That's probably the best option and that's what we're going to try. Second is install it on some kind of a pedestal assembly between the rear seats or at the back of the rear seats in a place where the convertible top operation won't interfere with the camera but that uh, can see out. The installations I've seen like this are ugly and they're probably susceptible to wind buffeting, um, passenger interference if you have anyone in the back seat of your Mustang, and uh, it's probably not a very good solution. The final solution I've seen is somebody actually uh, attaching it to the rear glass on the convertible and managing to route wiring so that the wiring wouldn't be uh, damaged or interfere with the operation of the top. That wasn't on a Mustang, but it's probably a terrible idea, even if you can get it to work, because if you drive with the top down, you could definitely got no rear channel. So we're gonna try and put this on the windshield facing backwards. But a key thing to remember is, Thinkware, say, you should put it with this Thinkware uh, logo facing into the cab. That's great if it's on the back window, but if it's gonna be on the front window, you need to put it with that Thinkware logo facing the front of the car. Um, otherwise, you'll end up with the image upside down. 
because this little camera here can be rotated around 360 degrees. So you're gonna want that Thinkware logo facing the front of the car, facing the windshield, if you attach it to the front window. Oh, and finally, <laughs> it uses a micro USB to micro USB cable to attach the uh, uh, head unit, the main dash cam, to their rear channel. And they thoughtfully send you about, I don't know, 25 feet or something of uh, cable, which is probably great if your uh, rear channel is going to be mounted uh, in the back of a vehicle. But when it's going to be mounted uh, right beside the front camera unit on the front windshield, uh, you need like a foot of cable. And this is not a very easy cable to come up with. Um, I've ordered uh, a couple of short cables um, from Amazon. I tried Memory Express. There was no hope of getting it there. Um, and I guess we'll see if they work. Um, none of them say they're a true straight through cable. They're, uh, they're some kind of a, uh, um, OTC cable, I think they're called, but we'll see if they work. Hopefully they will, because I'd sure like to have, you know, a foot of cable there instead of 25 feet coiled up around the, around the, uh, mirror. Okay. I have the system wired. First, I went through the fuse panel diagram and found a couple of circuits which were unused. There's lots of them on a Ford. One of them, circuit 37, is a 10 amp fuse in the panel and is an accessory um, circuit. The other one, uh, 38, which is adjacent to it, is a 20 amp fuse in the panel and is a continuous power circuit. So I put ADA taps in for those. I put uh, spade connectors on the end of the ADA taps so that as I add accessories to this car, I don't have to continuously go back into the fuse panel and make adjustments. I did have to modify the fuse box cover slightly, uh, cut a few pieces out of it in order to make room for the ADA taps. This is by far the least intrusive way to put wiring like this in a car. So then for the dash cam, I've strung the wire, pressed it in, up under the uh, under this lip. This was a hard top car, it'd probably be a lot easier to take the paneling out and put it in there. But you can't do that that easily on a convertible. It's all pressed in up under this lip. There's a single zip tie holding it on to the mirror wiring. Then it's pressed in along the A-pillar uh, trim, running down through here into the kick panel. And then it's uh, wired into my uh, ADA taps for the uh, uh, for the power. And there's a um, a metric uh, stud in there that takes a an M10 nut, uh, which is a good ground. So I've added the uh, um, I've added another nut to it and put I connectors on uh, the ground ends of the uh, cables and grounded them there. Um, in addition to the uh, dash cam, I uh, put in the wiring for the uh, wireless uh, phone charger. So that's already in place for when uh, we get to the phone charger part of this install. One tool that was real handy, this little, uh, this little trim tool, tiny trim tool, came with, uh, um, with a backup camera uh, kit and it was uh, just right, in addition to this little hook tool, to get this wiring tucked into the, into the uh, trim panels here. Um, it was a little bit harder to put in the trim panels than I at first thought, but it all went in. So that's wired up. We'll go ahead and mount the cameras and uh, we'll see if we have a dash cam system. Okay, let's get a look at this wiring. This is a passenger kick panel. I'll flip this around so you can see. There's two ADA taps there. Circuit 37 is a 10 amp switched. Circuit 38 is a 20 amp fixed or continuous. And both these circuits are not used in the factory application. The main unit looks forward and it provides forward collision avoidance, 
lane departure warning as well as traffic cam alerts. Although the jury is a little bit out on how well any of those systems work. In addition to the forward looking camera, there is a rear facing camera. Remember this is a convertible so you'd normally install this camera in the rear window. There's no way to do that with a convertible. So I've installed it like this. Its utility may be a little questionable but we're going to find out. To summarize the installation of the Thinkware U1000 dash camera, you stick it to the windshield, you stick the back channel to the windshield in this convertible or to the back window, you string a power cable from the head unit uh, up along under the trim down to your fuse box, you find a couple of circuits One's got to be an accessory circuit, one's got to be a continuous power circuit. You put add taps in the fuse box, you hook those up, and you hook up a ground. Then you plug the back channel camera into the front channel. In this case, that's right on the windshield. In the case of a, a typical installation, you have to string the back channel wiring to the back of the car and hook that up. That's the whole installation. That's it. There's nothing else. It's relatively straightforward. The hardest thing is identifying and accessing the accessory and continuous power circuits that you need in order to run it.